4.5b addition. Represent addition problems using an input-output table and a numerical expression to generate a number pattern that follows the given rule. Example 1. Let's use this function machine here and a vertical t-chart over an active inspire to record the input-output data. Then generate a numerical expression for the input-output table. First, select one of the green marbles and put it into the in section. It will travel through the machine and a number will come out of the out. So now I'm going to come over to my input table in Active Inspire. We input an 8. My output is 12. I'm going to go back to my function machine, pick up another marble. 3 this time, and I got a 7, so I'm going to record my data. I inserted a 3, and I received a 7 out of the function machine. I'm going to try two more, recording my data each time. I have a 7, and it gave me an 11 on the way out. See, this time I want to try five. So I'm going to input my five, and my output is nine. Now, ask the students and take notes over here on the side about a numerical expression that is true for each one of these rows going across. I input an eight, I equal to an output of 12. I input it a 3, and it equal to an output of 7. 7 to 11, 5 to 9. What type of numerical expression do we have here? The students will give you ideas, write those down, lead them towards the correct line. They should have come up with a numerical expression that said something about anything you put in the input, Add 4 to it is going to equal the output. So let's see if that's going to work. I'm going to input a 6. If we follow our rule, input 6 plus 4 equals 10. So I'm going to type in a 10, and now I'm going to go check and see if we got it right. It did work. Let's try it again. This time, let's input the 2. Oop. The machine can be a little picky about where and how far you put the marble in. Ooh, I put in a 2 this time. And our output is a 6. Did it follow that rule? You bet it did. We took 2 plus 4 equals 6. So our last one, 4. We add 4 to it, it should be an output of 8. Great job, we did it. Okay, so this is an example. How can the children check? Come right here, click on the handles. It opens the machine up. It tells us that we're doing addition, and it's a 4. But we can change it to whatever number we want by this this addition and subtraction symbols that are here. So I'm going to change it. I'm telling you my numerical expression is going to be plus 7 this time. Hopefully you can figure out a way to distract the children and change the function rule and close the door and then have a new input-output table. I'm going to switch over to a vertical, I mean a horizontal table, and we're going to continue on. I'm going to push reset. <coughs> Excuse me. Reset. Let's check and make sure our roll is still there. So if we put in a 5, we get a 12. Come over here and record our data. Put in 2 this time. And our data shows us that we get a 9. One more. Let's put in 8. We get 15. 
This time you need to direct the children. View. Instead of reading from left to right, we're going to read from what did we do to the top number to get the bottom number. So what did I do to 5 to get 12? What did I do to 2 to get this 9? What did I do to 8 to get the 15? Got all the ideas of the numerical expressions down here. Hopefully your students came up with any time we put an input number, we're going to add 7 to make it equal our output number. And they can suggest that, and then you can go and prove that they are right or wrong. So if I have a 7 here, I should have a 14 down here. And we did that by checking it, and it was correct. If you have any questions or anything, please go see your peer facilitator. Thanks a lot.